أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد يا أيها المستمعون اعلموا أن الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وإليه ترجعون ويا أيها المسلمون إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من النار ثم أما بعد Indeed, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the only deity worthy of praise. He is the only deity worthy of our worship. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we give thanks to Him for His many favors and bounties that He bestows upon us on a daily basis. We put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek refuge in He azza wa jal from the evils of ourselves. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the, even, the, from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. We know and we understand that there is those of us whom we have been given guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whomsoever has been given guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none can take that guidance away from that person save and accept by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And conversely, those who have not had their eyes open and their hearts receptive to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His permission, even if all of mankind and jinn kind were to get together and try to guide that person, they would not be able to do so they will not be able to do so save and accept the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As to what follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Qur'an, in a part of an ayah wherein He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition or the state of a group of people until and unless that group of people decides to come together, decides to self-reflect, and decides to make a change within themselves first and foremost. Only then will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help and assist in changing the state of affairs of that people. And the ayah continues. And, it, and the ayah says, And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends something that is ill and something that is not good to befall a group of people, when that permission has been granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing to stop it. There is nothing to stop it except the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we recognize and we understand that, not, that nothing in the heavens or the earth, in all of the universe, in all of the creation that we have knowledge of, 
and all of the creation that we have no knowledge of. Nothing makes a move. Nothing is done. Nothing happens save and except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of it. As to what follows, I want to remind myself first and foremost and yourselves about something that affects each and every one of us deeply. And if it doesn't affect each, of, each and every one of us deeply, then it should. Because there is none here, myself included, yourselves included, anyone who is here who is who claims or thinks that they have learned from the religion or they have studied or who continues to study. Those who have graduated from universities after studying Islam, none from amongst that category of people or that group of people can accept the challenge that I want to pose to each and every one of you. I want you to take some time and reflect on yourselves. It doesn't have to be right now. But take a period of time and use it as self-reflection. And think, are we living our lives completely and entirely, and note my words, completely and entirely without lapsing in any single regard? Are we living our lives completely and entirely in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us to live our lives. And the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has exemplified that we live our lives. And I don't think that we will find any one of us is without fault. I don't think that we will find any of us is without fault when it comes to making a mistake here and there. I don't think that any one of us will find within ourselves that there is something that we wouldn't change. There is some vice that is holding us back. There is some habit that we cannot kick. There is some sin that is like a rope tied to us. And it may be just one thing, but it holds us back. And so we just go with it. It may be only one thing, but it, since it's holding us back and that's the only thing, we say to ourselves that, okay, I'm doing all of the good, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm this and I'm that, but I can't give up, I can't give up backbiting. I can't give up talking about people behind their back, or I can't give up going to this place that is haram, or engaging in something that is haram. So you think to yourself that it's only one thing, that I'll continue with it, and hopefully Allah will forgive me, but this is not the right attitude that we should have. This is not the right attitude, rather we should try to make an active effort. We should make an active effort to change that situation that we are in. If we are even submerged in all of the sins of this world, there is still hope for us. There is still a way to save ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran in Surah Al-Zumar, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah reminds us, He says, O oh my servant, speaking directly to the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who are in His service, He is talking to the people who believe and call themselves Muslims. Those of you who have transgressed against yourselves, those of you who have transgressed against the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even to those people who have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not despair in the mercy of Allah. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues and He says, إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Indeed Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive all of you. But forgiveness doesn't just come like that. As we mentioned in the ayah before, Allah doesn't just do something without you making an effort first and foremost. So first and foremost, to change any single aspect of our lives or to change our lives entirely, 
We have to first recognize that there is a problem and that there is an issue. So if we don't take the time to self-reflect and we don't take the time to worry about ourselves, how are we to realize that there is a problem? The nature of human beings is that we never worry about ourselves. Rather, you're always looking at the person next to you. You're looking at that person's faults. And you can name many of us, we will be able to list a thousand faults of our friends, of our neighbors, of people that we associate with. But if we look to ourselves, if we try to do the same for ourselves, we will not be able to list. Because we spend so much time worrying about other people. When on the day of judgment, Allah will not ask you about your neighbors. Allah will not ask you about what that person did and what the other person did. Allah will ask you about what you did. Allah will ask you about how you acted towards your neighbors, how you acted towards yourself and how you acted towards the rest of His creation. So we need to take that time and reflect and understand where a problem is. Secondly, we must realize that there is no going back into the past. There is no going back into the past to undo an action. We cannot go back to the moment before we said something about a person behind their back and prevent ourselves from saying it. But we can do two things. We can stop ourselves from doing it in the future. And secondly, we can repent for that which we have done in the past. That which we have done in the past, as long as we are alive, and as long as we have health and strength and ability, what we have done in the past can be undone by sincere repentance. And we can stop ourselves from going forward in doing that action. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that there are two things, two blessings that many people they lose very quickly. And these two blessings are their health and their free time for doing good. Very quickly we will see that the opportunities that we had, the opportunities that we had or we once had, we no longer have them. Ask those, of, ask those from amongst us who are a little bit more advanced in age. And they will tell you that 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they used to do X, Y, and Z. They used to be able to go here and go there and do as they please. But now, sickness has befallen them. They are old and they are feeble and they are not able to do what they once did. How do we expect to have an intention like this? Many times we have this intention that we will do good. We will repent when we get older. When we get married and have kids and have a family and this and that, then we're going to start praying and then we're going to start doing good and then we're going to start practicing Islam. But for right now, we're going to live our life. As Muslims, Islam is your life. Islam is my life. So the only way we will change our state of affairs, the only way that we will change the harms that we are involved in, is by practicing our way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Allah reminds us that the way of life in the sight of Allah is Islam. So many times what we are doing, going and hanging out at this place and that place and doing haram, engaging in haram, saying haram, eating and drinking and consuming haram. Is that part of our way of life or are we living someone else's way of life? The way of, the way of life for a Muslim is to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remain steadfast in it. This is not to say that we won't slip up once in a while. This is not to say that each and every one of us does not make mistakes because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, 
Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions to us in a hadith that every son of Adam is a sinner. So every single human being is by default a sinner. We are not infallible. We will commit sin from time to time. But the best of those who commit sins are those who turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent. The best of those who turn back, the best of those who commit sins are those who turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. They repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this comes from, first of all, understanding where we have gone wrong. If we do not self-reflect, if we do not take the time to look at ourselves and see that we have slipped in this area, we have, you know, went off course in a certain area, how are we to fix it? And then the main way that you can re rewrite a wrong that you have done is by going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making tawbah. And tawbah is not just words that we utter, not just that we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Oh Allah, forgive us. Oh Allah, forgive me. Tawbah has to be felt in the heart, tawbah has to be done with sincerity. And I can't tell you what sincerity feels like. You have to know what sincerity feels like. When you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you, when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you ask for His forgiveness, do you go to Him with a heavy heart and come back with a lighter heart? Do you pour all of your emotion and all of your troubles to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to forgive us? If we don't do this, then we're not using one of the greatest tools we have as Muslims. We're not using one of the greatest tools that we have as Muslims, which is to turn to Allah and to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we've said in the beginning of the khutbah, there is nothing, no one, no creation on this earth or in the heavens that can help you without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your help has to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we expect to get the help? How do we expect to get the help unless we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And these advices are applicable in every situation on a grand scale and on a smaller scale as well. They are applicable when it comes to matters of the religion and when it comes to matters that we may not consider part of the religion. As Muslims, we have to realize, and it seems as though many of us have not reached the realization that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in total control and I think many times this is because, or rather it is a testament to the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a being, meaning the human, that is so advanced, that has been created in such a way that they have the ability to think. And many times that thinking gets them in trouble because what? We think that we are, a, we are a creator by ourselves. Because we create things, we build things, we have knowledge of things. And so we feel that we can now question what God has permitted and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. I was in one of my classes the other day and as a general requirement, we have to take a theology course, being a Catholic university. We have to take X amount of uh, theology courses. So I was in the class, and the professor is talking about, he's talking about the Bible. And he, the wording and the statements that he is using is as though he is trying to explain the thought process of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa na'udhu billah. 
us as humans being so little and so in insignificant. Yet we want to question, yet we want to quantify, yet we want to exemplify, yet we want to argue and to debate what Allah had meant to happen and what He didn't mean to happen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we spend our time in arguing frivolous matters and debating and, under, and trying to get into these frivolous matters, is our time not better spent trying to understand why we were created and trying to follow the rules and the regulations of that Creator? The last point that I want to mention when it comes to making change overall is that knowledge is key. Knowledge is a key aspect when it comes to making change. When it comes to Islam, when it comes to our worldly life, when it comes to anything, knowledge is key. This is why it is one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as mandatory that each and every Muslim male and female is obligated to seek knowledge. And of course, the best of knowledge, the best of knowledge is that of the religion. The best of knowledge is the knowledge of your way of life. How can we expect to be better human beings? How can we expect to be better Muslims? How can we expect to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't know how to attain His pleasure? If we don't know how, what to do to attain His pleasure? And the resources are, th are there. The resources are available to us. There are teachers that are available to us. There are books that are available to us. But what is the excuse? There is no excuse except that we as human beings, we as Muslims are lazy. We are lazy. Not to say that you don't go out and work. Not to say that you don't go out and provide for your family. But providing for your family, going out to work, Going to university, going and, and seeking worldly knowledge is important, you have to do it. But just as important as seeking the worldly life is seeking the life of the Akhirah. How can we live our lives one-sided? How can we live our lives one-sided, claim to be Muslims, but then do everything or make most of the effort in the way of the dunya? Rather, most of our effort should be directed to the eternal and everlasting life. This goes for our older and more adult brothers and sisters, as well as the children. As adults, as parents, as people who are responsible for younger members of our community, we have to realize that Yes, getting an education, a secular education is important. But just as important is that they know who created them. Is that they know that they have to pray. They know how to pray. Just as important as learning about, you know, different types of literature, for example, is them knowing about the stories of the Prophet wasalam. Just as important is them knowing the lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has embedded within the Qur'an. And until and unless we implement learning about Islam as an important part of our child's life, then the state of our ummah will not change. The state of our ummah will not change because people will grow up and they won't know what to do. People have already grown up and turned to adults and have families of their own. And, and think about it, their parents may be good Muslims, their parents may be upright people, but their child grows up and they were not taught. Islam was not thrusted upon them as something important. Knowledge of Islam was not thrusted upon them as something important, so they grew up and had children and ended up farther away from the deen. And this trend will continue to happen on a large scale until and unless we make an effort to, to have our children grow up in a way that they know what their purpose in life is. 
that they know what their purpose in life is and that they raise their families in that regard. And this goes for the adults as well, that you as a, as a, as a role model must realize and must acknowledge that your duty is to show and to be an example and a leader to your family and to your community. But if we don't take the opportunity upon ourselves as, a, as an adult and go and seek knowledge of the deen, so as to provide for your child, so as to provide in the way of the akhirah for your child, then we will never see a change in our state of affairs. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the ability to do that which we have mentioned. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He uses us as an instrument to see change within the Muslim community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guides us to that which is right. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our sins and enter us into Jannatul Firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'i muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدنا الشباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتغيظهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغض أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمنا ورحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بال عدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله أذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم